dear audience, um, it's an honor to, to be here. On behalf of the Catalog government, I would like to thank the institution, uh, Institute of Cultural Diplomacy, for giving us the opportunity to be here today. I would especially thank uh, Mr. Dornfried and Mr. Blanchard, who put tremendous efforts uh, for all these inspiring personalities that they could be here today. Thank you for having me. Uh, so it's a great grand honor to stand here in front of you as the delegate of the Catalan government in Germany. And I would like to begin my speech by listing um, our three key areas of our work here in Berlin, which is um, promoting the Catalan economic and creative talent and expertise, assisting the Catalan community abroad, and informing about <coughs> Catalonia, which I'm happy to do today. On that note, we count on the invaluable work of four uh, entities. Therefore, I would like to introduce you to the d directors of Catalonia Trade Investment, Mr. Mati Adroé, specialized in business interna internationalization. Um, the Catalan Institute for Cultural Companies, Ms. Neus Melik and Cheka. And uh, Mrs. Silvia Gonzalez from the Institut Ramon Llull, who both engage in the cultural field. And of course, uh, the director of Catalonia Turismo, Mrs. Montserrat Sierra, um, with focus on tourism strategies. By all means, uh, feel free to talk to my colleagues during the evening. They are ve all very happy to get to know you and to answer all your questions about Catalonia. Yes. So you may have heard or read about Catalonia in the last few months. Some of you might be related to Catalonia more than others. Some of you might even have friends or family there. And I'm always very surprised how Catalonia, Catalonia keeps popping up in many conversations. People have often told me, oh, Barcelona, my niece did an Erasmus there, or my son is currently working in Tarragona. Um, and when saying that, I sometimes perceive a proudish sparkle in my speaker's eyes, um, which at the same time makes me proud of working for the region that apparently attracts many curious young people from Germany, as well as from numerous countries of the world. Could I have some water, please? As I was preparing my speech for today at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, an image came to my mind, which I would like to share with you. Now, I want to invite you to stroll around in the city center of Barcelona. Imagine all those narrow streets and bright sunlight of the Mediterranean with all those balconies and shops and their beautiful buildings. Maybe, thank you. Maybe some of you have passed by the Museum of Contemporary Art, Makba, in the very, very center of the city with young people mingling in the square in front of the building. Many of them are skating, others are just sitting there and talking to each other, and some even meet to enter the museum. Isn't it nice to know that a museum of modern art is one of the center points of the student's social life? Maybe one of those young family members people told me about are sitting there right now having inspiring conversations with their peers, who knows? Catalonia is definitely a place where people meet and personal stories intertwine. People there usually meet in squares or cafes. Some travel to the countryside, others stay there for longer. Hills and beaches, museum and theaters, all frequented by both locals and foreigners. Our universities, although still under the consequences of austerity rules, attract academics from all over the world. With dedication and passion, our scientists work on state-of-the-art projects in many challenging fields. In Catalonia, 
Culture and creativity are one of the most valued goods. I remember a graffiti artist doing one of his murals in a public square in Girona. Right next to him, there was a couple of elderly people talking to each other. And I was thinking, in other places, the same people would probably have complained about the smelly paint. But in Catalonia, they accept the temporary other trouble because they understand that there is a higher benefit to it. A piece of art is being created. I wonder if it's this kind of flexibility in the Catalan minds that gives way to its two main features, an innovative and a very welcoming way of life. Why welcoming? Because those who bring culture from abroad are considered beneficial to society. Furthermore, I think that this is one of the reasons why young and creative people easily feel attracted to Barcelona and feel at home in Catalonia. A broad local cultural background constantly nourishes our creators and artists. It is also in the DNA of our industries and companies. Their creativity and exclusive designs have led them to economic success. Catalonia is, by the way, one of the economically strongest regions of Europe. Renowned Catalans as Montserrat Caballé, and Joan Miró, and Antoni Gaudí are without any doubt part of the international heritage of creativity. But I would like you to invite to dig a little deeper and get familiar with contemporary artists like the dancer Sol Pico or Angels Margarit, the performer Esther Ferré, or the musician Andreas Mo Andrea Motis. In case you want to, but you don't know where to start, then take things easy. We understand that gastronomy is part of our cultural landscape. Visit any of the restaurants throughout Catalonia that offer top-class cuisine, combining their strong Mediterranean roots with inspirations from abroad. And whilst tasting culinary artworks and sipping local wine, I am pretty sure that you'll feel a little like those young international students and residents happily confused and seduced by the local cultural and cul culinary diversity. Well, that brings me to the end of my speech. And uh, now I will pass you over to Mr. Matias Roe from Catalonia Trade Invest. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask after his presentation or any time during the evening. And if you are interested, please find additional material about Catalonia's tourism culture and business opportunities on our information desk outside. And thank you very much. Enjoy the evening. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, einen guten Nachmittag. In uh, my name is Marti Adrué. I have just been presented, uh, and I'm uh, the executive director of Catalonia Trade and Investment in Germany, uh, from where, from our two offices to our two branches in the Federal Republic, we cover uh, in Berlin and Stuttgart. We cover the German, the Austrian, and the Swiss markets. Hmm? First of all, I would like to introduce uh, my company, the agency Catalonia Trade and Investment, then talk a little bit about what we do and why we do it, hmm? how we work specifically, uh, and then, uh, well, just as uh, the delegate of the Catalan government to Germany just mentioned, open the floor to Q's and A's, to some questions you may have, so that we can all discuss and enrich the contributions that have been done. Before, uh, Starting take, uh, uh, taking up the presentation, I would like to thank the Institute for uh, for Cultural Diplomacy uh, for the invitation and for the, for the opportunity of being here today and presenting uh, what we do. We are a public agency, some submitted actually to private law. Therefore, we act as a company which gives ser consultancy serv services to other companies to companies willing to tackle 
foreign markets, to get Catalan companies willing to tackle foreign markets, as well as to companies from other markets from all over the world who show interest in either collaborating technologically with Catalan partners or investing in Catalonia. We have a network of 40 branches of 40 offices all around the world, two of which are in Germany, our office in Berlin, and our office in, in Stuttgart. And from those offices, we cover uh, 100 markets all over the world. As I, I, as I have just mentioned, giving, providing consultancy services to Catalan companies and helping companies from all, all uh, those markets all over the world to get to know Catalonia and to collaborate to invest in Catalonia. This is what we do. Why do we do that? First of all, because there is a demand for such services being provided by the public administration, by the Catalan business community, by companies, by the public in general. At the end of the day, we as a company, as Catalonia Trade and Investment, we have a, manda a mandate of the Catalan parliament to, to deploy our activities all over the world. But we do, we do it as well because actually having an open economy and pushing the Catalan companies, factors of production all over the world is, not, is nothing new for us. I mean, Catalonia has been, has been a trading nation since the Middle Ages. Even before that, when uh, Publius Cornelius Scipio decided to block the route to, uh, of an evil to Rome uh, in the area which is nowadays well, is known as Catalonia, they knew that it would be, and actually, Tarragona, Tarraco became the second city uh, within, the, within the Roman Empire, it was very clear that Catalonia integrated in the Mediterranean world, when the Mediterranean ruled the world, as a trading point, as a trading station, a, a, strong, a strong trading station, and as well as a compound of human talents, opportunities, and uh, and projects, economic projects, which have actually developed all over the world. I, just, I, have, just mentioned, I have just mentioned it some centuries later. Uh, the Catalans built trading posts all over the, Mediter in the Mediterranean, more or less when the, the Hansa League was organizing the trade routes in Northern Europe, uh, the Catalans, with, with, as a state within the crown of Aragon, were uh, were uh, doing the same in the Mediterranean region. Also because there are the factors of production in Catalonia. This expansion, commercial expansion, led to a, an accumulation of capital which beginning of the, of the 18th century and throughout the 19th century led to an industrial revolution which turned Catalonia into an industrial region within the wider European context. We have a competitive mix, which is not, which hasn't been created in the last or throughout the last de decades. It has been accumulated. It has been growing up in Catalonia. It's rooted in Catalonia since plenty of years. So this is not, it is not that we are helping Catalan companies to tackle foreign markets because the last crisis, the financial crisis, but because Catalonia has always had this openness has always acted as an economical bridge between Europe uh, and the Iberian Peninsula. What we have nowadays is a completely modern economic basis, which actually in the proportions is not that different from what you would find in any, in any other Western country. Industry is well above the requirements set by the European Commission, around 21% of the, of the GDP, but services related to, to, to industry, together with industry, reflect, uh, account for 50% of the Catalan GDP. So we are actually talking about an industrial region, we are talking about an industrial country. Some figures are maybe the most easy, or the easiest to understand for the non Catalan or non-Spanish audience are 16% 16, 16 of the Spanish population, 20% of the Spanish GDP, 24% of the Spanish industry, 
25% of the Spanish uh, companies and 24% of Spanish regular exports. If we look at the exports, we see that, well, you can see the, double, the W effect clearly, but they have been growing steadily since 2013. This means last year we hit the figure of almost 71 billion, I mean Anglo-Saxon billions, 71,000 million euros being exported by Catalan companies. This is the highest figure ever reached in Catalan exports ever. When it comes to investment attraction, which is the other one of the other uh, areas in which we, in which we work, we see that throughout the years between 2000, 2017 and 2013, Catalonia attracted more than 20 billion euros. Again, 20,000 million euros, which in average can be broken down at 4,000 million on annual average. Mm -hmm. Year 2017 may come up to you as, a, as an interesting year. Actually, the investment, a foreign direct investment in Catalonia went down from the previous year, but kept, kept stable compared to the figures of year 2014. If we look at the German, which is the major investor uh, companies from Germany, Germany as a market is the first investor in Catalonia, we see that the figures remained steady from 2016 and 2017. Does it mean that the gap from 2015 to 2016, something special happened? Actually, Catalonia is at the end of the day, small region, and probably it's related to a specific in, to a specific investment. I can tell you that the extra extraordinary figures of uh, FDI from Germany in 2013 account for the localization of the production of the Audi, Audi uh, Q3, uh, the, the Q3 uh, to Martorell, therefore the figures. But investments remain steady, remain stable, and Catalonia keeps on attracting investments uh, each uh, year and even increasing the, the, this tendency. Since we are in Germany, uh, I would just like to mention that we have, well, actually three, almost 300 companies, Catalan companies with subsidiaries in, in Germany and more than 1,000 companies, I, more than 1,000 German companies which uh, are based in Catalonia. You can see that Germany is actually the first investor, followed by France and other countries of the European Union, of the European single market, but also uh, of the United States. The business landscape in Catalonia is diverse, it's big, and it's changing, it's dynamic. Mm -hmm. We actually have Six, uh, 618,000 companies based in Catalonia, a figure which, which keeps growing steadily throughout the years, especially since the financial crisis, uh, crisis was declared as over in 2013. This means both companies founded in Catalonia as well as companies, foreign companies based in Catalonia, which are or create, create the, their headquarters for Europe or, uh, or uh, any productive activity in, uh, or place any uh, productive activity in Catalonia. This is what we are, we are a competitive economy. It's not that I as the, the, the director of Axio in Germany uh, have come out with figures. I mean, this is attested, the reality of Catalan economy is attested by, well, the specific weight of Barcelona as one of the most innovative cities in Europe, but as well as for the whole of Catalonia with its productive platform, which attracts, develops products, services, and attracts investments to Catalonia. Catalonia has been actually chosen, has been chosen as the best 
Southern European Region for Investments by the Financial Times Group. And our agency, Catalonia Trade and Investment, has been chosen as the best promotion, trade uh, and investment promotion agency for its strategy. So this is something we can be proud of. And I will, be I'll, I will gladly answer your questions uh, after my intervention. Thank you very much. And this is where, where you can find us in Germany. Thank you. Well, first of all, I have to I have to apologize for, I mean, we can over a glass of wine we can discuss it. But I, acting in my capacity as a director, uh, I'm not a politician. A uh, politician, obviously, you may have noticed that. So I'm not I'm not in the position to answer uh, what uh, my agency thinks about the pos the prospects of the of the independence of Catalonia. What I can tell you, what I can tell you, is that despite what we see is a an economy that keeps growing and that has perfectly integrated not only within the European single market, but that has globalized. I was reading an article today at the, uh, while flying over here because while well, I actually live in Berlin, but I went for family reasons. I went to, to Catalonia uh, uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday. And actually what said that, well, Catalonia is exporting nowadays 34% of the GDP after the crisis. So, and actually, what this, what this, what this writer, what this is actually an economist, what he was saying, and he had a point that this means that we have done things right as a society, and it has to be, it has to be said, it has to be to be said so. Actually, we, the universities did their part, the governments did their part as well, but the society took upon itself to bringing. Or to going uh, to, to moving out from the crisis situation, taking the effort of internationalizing, of moving forward, of becoming more competitive, of becoming more innovative, and is actually the result of what has been done so far. I mean, it's obvious that this has gone, this has taken place throughout a period in which you can judge yourself. Catalan and Spanish politics hasn't, haven't been particularly quiet. What will happen? I don't know. If you ask, if you ask, if you ask me for my opinion, then we can discuss it uh, uh, downstairs uh, uh, after the, the recess. But you see, you see that we, uh, what, what we see is a Catalan economy which is strong, which is globalized, which is open, and uh, that actually has taken up not only political distress or politi uh, small, difficult political situations, but a financial crisis that really, really could have turned not only Catalonia, but the whole of Spain in a complete different direction. And this, and this is not the direction we are, we are, we are headed up to now. Politically, uh, uh, make my point on these figures. What we see, what we see is that in the year, if I may. <laughs> I want to be I want to be to reassure myself of the figures I give because sorry what we see is that in 2017 actually some 3700 companies moved their seat out of Catalonia this is a fact mm -hmm. At the same time, the number of companies being created in Catalonia by foreign investors or by local capital in 2017 went up to uh, 9,385, which clearly offsets the companies moving from Catalonia to other parts of Spain. But they might be very different in size. Actually, what we know, what we also know, is that out of these 3,700 companies which <laughs> moved out of Catalonia, 80% of, 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 of them were small and medium-sized companies. Most of them moved to Madrid, to the Autonomous Community of Madrid, which, which by the way, has a very, a very favorable or a positive envir business environment as regards the corporate tax. So it's statistically... Uh, for me, it's just a, as, a as a technician, it's very difficult to draw conclusions 
out of the situation. At the same time, in the same year, 600 companies from all over Spain moved their seat, the, the, their seat to Catalonia. So actually, I cannot see, and this is what I have to tell you, I cannot see, I cannot draw any statistical conclusions of this situation. Is it true that 307 uh, uh, companies moved their uh, social uh, seat out of Catalonia? At the same time, almost uh, 9,000 companies were created or invested in Catalonia. to appreciate our, the presentation of Mr. Matias Rey. There is no any more questions, and we will move on to the next point of the, of the day. Thank you.